Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order for Thursday, December 22nd, 2022. The time is now 7.01 p.m. Our first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that everyone please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. For a general announcement, the meetings, as always, are recorded for both audio and video and are posted on YouTube, typically uh, shortly after the meeting occurs. We ask that you please silence your cell phones and make sure that there are no disruptions during the meetings. And there are masks and hand sanitizer in the front of the room for anyone interested. Um, first item is to approve the minutes of the November 12th, 2022 yeah. workshop meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to approve the minutes of the November 17th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And the minutes for the December 17th workshop meeting are not yet completed, so we'll be reviewing and uh, approving them at the next uh, regularly scheduled Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, next is the Treasurer's Report. Irene, is there anything that you would like to bring up or highlight? Uh, no, I guess it's an agenda item later on about the PSATs. Yes. Um, item, so I'll address it once we get to that. That's all. Uh, nothing unusual, nothing out of ordinary, except for bills are just going up. So I think the gas bill was six hundred and fifty-four dollars. Yeah, and we keep it cold in here. Yeah, okay. the windows. Yeah, the, say the whole building. No insulation. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. no escaping it. Yeah. Okay. Next is to approve the payment of bills for December twenty twenty-two. So I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up and speaking towards the microphone. Please be sure to state your name and address clearly and to sign in so that we can properly record the public comment. Yeah. There's nobody on Zoom. Okay. Okay, seeing no comments, we'll enter into the main items for discussion. Item one is the Act 537. Our SEO is still actively performing inspections in the Northwest District and will soon send out the letters to property owners in the East District for inspections that need to occur during the 2023-2024 year. Hydroterra um, completed the existing dwelling unit uh, for the proposed sewer service area. We received that report that detailed that. Um, we're going to be reviewing costs for a potential uh, low pressure system or components being a low pressure system in January. Um, and the only other sizable update is we received um, interest in adding additional EDUs by AU Associates, who is looking to develop a 25-acre parcel, half of which is in Marion, half of which is in Heidelberg. Um, they're looking for an assur assurance that we're willing to accept these residents as customers. Bottom line is, yes, we're, we're willing to accommodate that, but we're in the process of uh, revisiting that intermunicipal agreement. Um, I believe there was a draft that was sent out, but I have not gotten to read through it in its entirety yet. That yep, was that, either yesterday or today that that came in. Yep, that draft was sent this afternoon yeah. to counsel for WSA. Okay, excellent. We'll keep an eye on that. But that's progressing nicely in the background, it seems. And then the other quick update for you, Peter, is that Andy contacted the DEP on the proposed timeline mm -hmm. that the board approved for submission at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. We're waiting to hear back from uh, Tim Wagner at the DEP, although uh, we don't expect to hear back until uh, yeah. the turn of the new year. Yeah, so understandable. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, the only other item that we had that we ratified at the workshop meeting was the escrow account for any legal or engineering expenses that we incur with WSA. Um, they have asked that we set up an escrow account of about 7500 We approved this uh, as we've already spent about 1000 for the EDU study. So... Um, Who's the escrow account going to be set up through? I uh, guess. It's we're setting something up with WSA, so I'd imagine whoever they bank with, whether it's Fulton okay. or whomever, we'll, we'll get something okay. from them very similar to what we have to deal with on Correct. this side of things for the, the sewage tank cooler. Okay. So. And the the agreement specifies that WSA has the discretion to draw down that escrow um, when necessary. 
which makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything either of you want to add on that? We're in kind no, of a holding pattern for a lot of things. Just be like um, source interest, all that other stuff that will be included in the uh, escrow agreements. Did you say interest? Yes. N no, but the the. It's to protect to protect the township, the agreement says that those fees must be reasonable. Um, oh no no no! So yeah. Irene's actually going the opposite direction. If yeah. there's seven thousand five hundred dollars sitting in an account somewhere and they're not right. using it, they're not using it, they're not using it. Oh oh, I'm sure I'm sure yeah. I'm sure it will be in an, an account bearing interest. Yes. yes, right, right. So yes. so those terms would be in the agreement as well. If if the township would like that in the agreement, that absolutely, could certainly be, yeah. I want sure. everything. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Spell yeah. it out. Make sure. Spell it out. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Next is the emergency management coordinators report. Uh, John is here. John, I don't know if there's anything that you want to say. Otherwise, I'll give a, a quick update based on the notes that I have. Um, he's looking to purchase strobe lights for the drone. Um, minimal cost. The two lights are $29.99 each, plus shipping and handling and tax. Um, I'll make a motion to approve that request out of the EMC budget for uh, two strobe lights for the drone at $29.99 each plus any applicable tax and shipping. I have to abstain. Yeah, I would say we need, we need a yeah. second here. Oh, <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Abstain. Jim. Aye. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I have is the municipal action plan is completed. John, is there anything else that you want to highlight or is that pretty much the... It's submitted. Okay, cool. Too late. No, 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 no. I just meant like on top of that, is yeah. there anything that he wants to bring up at the last meeting of the year? And if not, speak now or, or forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, in, in which case, we'll move on to the next item, which is the Dutch Valley Food Distributors, uh, L-E-R-T-A or LERTA. Uh, we received the application for LERTA tax relief from Dutch Valley Food Distributors uh, per Attorney McFarland, uh, excuse me, McFarland. We now need to adopt an ordinance to approve the tax exemption for Dutch Valley, which is why they submitted another application. Um, we kind of batted this around and we, we made sense of it at the workshop meeting, but we have to designate the area and then they have to apply for it and then we have to approve it. Right. So the so, first the first ordinance yeah. created the district. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a, a multifaceted approach. Um, so I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I saw a draft copy of that ordinance or that was just an email from Andy? No, that must have been the just ordinance that created, created the district. It. Okay, so we're still waiting for the other ordinance. Yeah, we didn't get yeah. it. So, okay. so the, the board will want to make a motion to authorize the solicitor's drafting and advertisement of that ordinance Okay. for enactment at the next possible meeting. Okay, so we will be motioning to authorize the solicitor, a solicitor to uh, at, advertise for consideration at the next board of supervisors meeting, the uh, draft the yeah. ordinance the, and enact okay. to draft the ordinance and enact at the next supervisors meeting at the next possible po yeah next at the next possible, possible supervisors, supervisors meeting. meeting yes Do you have to yes okay. so yeah. you have, you have enough there to make a motion out of that <laughs> advertise and adopt at the next the next meeting. possible meeting yes correct yep okay got we'll, it we'll call out my motion second second. Irene seconded. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. <clears throat> Did you say something about trying to prepare some of that, Irene? Or is no. that? Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to put words in your mouth or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Never did learn. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. A, an entirely new yeah. thing for me, too. Um, okay. Next is the CWPLD 37 Main Street. These are the self-storage units. We are still waiting for the property owner to sign the improvements agreement and the stormwater agreement and provide the financial surety and letter of credit. Until they do that, there's really not much action happening there. Uh, next is Creekview Dairy Operations on 952 Route 419. Jason Rickards from BCCD issued an inspection report. A swale was created that collected the runoff from the additional driveway culverts that were installed, plus the outflow from the detention basin that is then conveyed directly to the downstream culvert beneath 419. This results in the drainage not being treated for water quality since it bypasses the vegetated filter strip required by the NPDES permit that was shown on the plans. 
As a result, the property owners are required to amend the NPDES permit and or revise the plan to address the situation. Um, they will have to do a corrective action plan, which could indicate an alternative means for treatment that might require additional site construction or justify what was constructed. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So at this point, we just have to wait for them to file much like we had talked about in prior meetings and it can be reviewed and with any luck, approved. Chuck, have you heard anything more on that? I have not. Um, you know, in addition to to closing out the NPDES permit, um, they also have to close out the project with the township, uh, provide ad builds, uh, as built calculations. Uh, and then as part of that review and pending any other modifications or site construction, uh, they could request the release of their letter of credit. But we're waiting for that to happen. It, it, be my estimation, they're probably trying to get through the NPDES permit to see what they're going to have to do. And then perhaps wait until that, if construction, any additional construction is required until that's completed to, to prepare the as built. But at least it's it's in uh, in the works. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the road projects for 2023. This is primarily the Colberts. Uh, McCarthy Engineering heard back from Monarch. They have started production this past week and we'll have Reichert Roads Colbert finish the week of December 26th. Uh, we need to confirm if that's finished and ready for delivery or finished and curing, what the time frame actually is going to entail. Uh, but depending on what that actually translates to, we'll coordinate with Ryan Allgaier for actually doing the installation. He was going to try to be here tonight, but obviously hey, not, so. it's okay. We'll, we'll, I'll, one of us will give him a phone call or, or Butch, if you can talk to Ryan at some point. Um, just kind of get his his read on that and see when we want to do that. Yeah, we want to have like one to two weeks notice on that. The only thing I'll advise is I have not seen the permit for that culvert or the plans for that culvert yet. I do have it for, for Marion Drive now. We should um, have that on file. Because we got the permit back on that one. Were shot drawings. Is that what you want? The, no, the, the original permit drawings it's in my in email permit. somewhere yeah and that, that's fine we can catch up but i yeah. guess i i just because i was looking through uh the permit and i'm jumping ahead now to the marion drive culvert um the permit stipulations do restrict the the construction period at least on the marion drive one and that's why i wanted to see yeah, what i know the there's certain was there's certain times um, of year but i don't I don't know that had any. And it's from. Rule, but... it's from... I, I, I think they were all four hit and five buried. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. and <clears throat> so it's it's a standard November one through March thirty first. Mm -hmm. The issue is, I guess, the little turtles are underground, mm -hmm. and if you excavate, you may disturb them. Um, that being said, I I have had some luck in the past reaching out to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, requesting relief from those stipulations. Okay. So once we have a schedule from the contractor, uh, if the township so desires, I would, I would reach out and try and get that permission to start that project yeah. earlier. I, I would say let's go down the avenue of trying to get that permission. Okay. Because I, I don't think it's going to be until March. Like even if it takes a couple of weeks for it to cure, we'd still be sitting on our hands for Yeah, I mean the months. culverts they typically await 28 days for cure period on that and then shipping what have you. You know, the bigger issue is going to be weather conditions mm -hmm. um and, and whether the contractor can actually do the work. Um if we don't get, you know, like it's predicted this weekend, if it's way below zero, it's going to be tough. Um, precipitation is going to be tough. Snow is going to be real tough. Uh, all those factors. But if but if we do have a, a a period, you know that that could, you know, the removal of the existing culverts, preparation, what have you, you know, if that's three four days a week. Uh, box culverts framed into position and fact build, and, you know, so it could be a two three week process. Paving is the only problem then. Uh, obviously, the paving uh, asphalt plants being closed down for the winter. Um, so we'd have to talk about what we do on a temporary basis, you know, just stoning the road in or something like that. Yeah. Um, until the pavement plants open. But, and also I wanted to, you know, talk to the contractor too, make sure he's aware of, there are other pre-construction notifications that have to happen 
and actually a pre-construction meeting with the Brooks County Conservation District. Okay. And he also well, Brian, so, Brian is on our road. Yeah, trip. as I say, we're yeah. doing this in-house. So okay. yeah. But again, I don't and that's for Rikert, but uh, I'm looking at it and I'm pretty sure it's probably pretty similar uh -huh. um to, to the stipulations for the Marion Drive project. So um just want to make sure he's uh, apprised of that and obviously adheres to it in accordance with the permit. Um, but yeah, um, once we get a schedule from him, I can I can reach out to U.S. Fish and Wildlife and make sure we can can proceed um, within those prohibited dates. Is the key. Um, the other thing I just note, um, you know, the permits are good for three years. Um, I know that all four culverts have been ordered, so I guess the, the intention is to push yeah. through with all them this year, yeah. and I think that that's that's a wise move. Um, you know, for the Marion Drive culvert too, just uh, as a quick update, I think I kept everybody apprised of which Marion Drive we have. Oh, uh, Sorry, okay, North. You. <laughs> um, you know, the township received a, a concern or a complaint about the road settling there, yeah. and I went out and looked at it, and there, there's definitely some settlement going on there. And, you know, I believe it's probably you know those pipes are flowing. There's the, the streams are flowing through there, and with the bottoms rusted out um, and joints separated and what have you, I'm pretty confident that, you know, there's continual erosion happening for the soil outside of the pipe, which then supports the road above. So that's why I had recommended to, to the roadmaster to Butch to uh, get a steel plate down just, just to make sure um, we're covered because it is pretty substantial. We did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, good. And, um, you know, there was a complaint about, I guess, a car bottomed out driving over it, depending on the speed. So, again, I think it was just a good safety measure until we get that culvert replaced. I, I do know, I do know Ryan has a big job uh, <laughs> in your march. He got a bid. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, I would give you a safe day to uh, job. Um, uh, Time well, hopefully we can get at so least maybe Riker done here yeah. before then, and then once he's done with that other job, I'm assuming the plan would be to fall back and do the other culverts. Yeah, if we can under the bunker. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah, but that'll be after March. That stipulation is only up to March thirty first. So after that, we're free to go. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I do know. Yeah, please tell and you said uh, that was going in March sometime. Okay. okay. Uh, only other thing that I wanted to add to that is the the other permit, the Marion uh, Drive North, was finally approved. So we have all four of the cur uh, permits for the culverts. Um, and I do have, it's one of the items that Sue passed out, the sign order, which does include the steel plate sign. Um, it's on the agenda. Yeah, I know it's a agenda item, but I just wanted to mention that we, we have those uh, on order. And I also took the liberty of, so I wasn't sure if the previous engineer provided a paper set of plans as they were approved yet to the township. So I printed a set to bring here for you and or <clears throat> for the contractor. <clears throat> so I'll leave those here for you guys. And <clears throat> I also wanted to note or, or, or talk to him, you know, he is supposed to keep all, all right. this paperwork out on site. <laughs> okay. The permit, the plan on site when he's doing working on any of these culverts. Okay. Should anybody stop, question, you know, the authorization to do that work. Okay including the conservation district you know they may stop out periodically but i'm sure they will cover that at a pre-construction meeting so again he needs to be aware of you know setting up a pre-construction meeting with the conservation district i think it's seven days before construction okay. also should do the the pa1 call um utility location um, and also, he's required to contact the, the PA Fish and Boat Commission. And of course, all that's predicated on we get permission from U.S. Fish and Wildlife to move ahead with that project before March 31st. Okay. 
So just a little bit of coordination there, and I'm willing to help out in any way I can. I can, certainly. Yep. 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 So as long as I have all that stuff in a folder, which can keep it in the truck. Correct. Yeah. Whenever he's on site, he should have that. Okay. When you're done working the day, uh, each day you can take it along. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. While you're there working, yeah. you should have the, you should probably the permit there and the plans the there. Free, free ring binder. Yep, just keep it in the truck yeah. and you'll be fine. Yep, yep. Okay. okay. Next up on the agenda is the crane rental, which is one of the components of the first culvert installation. Uh, we have gotten two quotes so far. We're still holding out the third. We're disappointed that we didn't get the third one, but we didn't it, get it. It is what it is. We have, like you said, until January. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on the math here, but the Dickinsons and Sons came to a total of $5,300. I didn't add that out because I was confused. Um, so I think it, the way it works is it's crane and labor rental for eight hours is $4,200. Um, over time per hour is 640 So if we don't go over the, the eight hours, we don't have to do that. The trucking and permits for a round trip is $1,100, and the lift plan, if it's required, is $250. So the only two things that would really come into play here are the $4,200 and the $1,100. So, Getting... what is the lift plan? Uh, the lift plan is really how they're going to set the crane up on the site okay. uh, to safely uh, lift, swing, uh, and place the culvert in accordance with the limitation okay. of the crane itself. So, I would think that $250 is part of it. It says okay. lift plan if required. Oh, if required. Okay. So, so basically, um, it's called fifty five hundred bucks. The other quote was from Griner Industries, um, which between the daily rate for eight hours, the overtime rate, fuel surcharge, mobilization, uh, came to seven thousand one hundred ninety four dollars. Um, so, we're still going to try to get that third quote so that we can use liquid fuels potentially. Otherwise, if we don't get the third uh, quote. By the next uh, January Board of Supervisors meeting, we'll we'll go with Dickinson and Sons being the lowest option. And even if you take off that overtime rate of four sixty over eight, it's it's that, still it's still yeah, yeah it's over. still considerably cheaper. And the lift plan probably wouldn't. And they didn't have a lift plan. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with the project site, but the issue would be you know if there's any power lines around there's or no a building or something yeah. like that that you would have to be conscientious yeah. of swinging yeah. uh, the load over or around um so yeah i would not see the need for a lift okay. plan then okay. if there's if that those circumstances aren't present there okay there there are no wires on, Good. on the wire or the no the newer the right right okay. that's why he wanted to Good. do the record first yeah because it's easier yeah wide open yeah <laughs> okay so yeah like I said, we'll just wait until the January meeting to hopefully have the third one and go from there. Yep. Um, related to that, the next agenda item is the pump rental for the culvert projects. Uh, Ryan estimates that we'll need a pump for about two weeks. Uh, the best line equipment rental participates with CoStars. So we sh correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Colin, we don't have to, to put that out to bid if it's on CoStars, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so I'll make a, a motion to... Well, I think he told me he was going to try to get a couple more estimates. Like, I mean, he, he can. I said, well, if they participate with co-stars, we don't need yeah. more estimates. You, you so. don't, but they can vary. So I, it, let me, it's a little crazy, in my opinion. Let me let me throw this out here, that we can authorize Ryan to go through co-stars unless he finds three quotes that are, or a quote out of the three that is better than the co-stars option. Like if we can satisfy both criteria, we can just kind of authorize them to take it and run with it. Yeah, and what I was saying was the co-stars, mm -hmm. those quotes can be different. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just so you know. Okay. Right, and then Butch had talked to Butch Fike at Topahawken. Mm -hmm. Butch Fike at Topahawken said we can use their pump unless they need it. Okay. And Ryan said we're going to need it for more than a day or two because yeah. there's something, and I you understand this, there's something that's going to have to be framed up, concrete poured in, mm -hmm. and we got to divert the water. They have to divert the stream flow around the, the culvert site. Yeah. So uh, said, and that could be. concrete is going to be more than a day or two. Yeah. 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 So well, you're going to keep that area dry for a couple days. Right. 
That's so the pump will have to be running uh, overnight yeah. um, to, to keep up with the stream flow. And of course, then the only other concern is we get a big rain event and the pump he has on site can handle it. Well, that was another thing. He said he, this one is a, I put that on here, um, a six inch. Okay, six inch, he, he should probably be Because he good. said if it does rain, <laughs> he's got, that should take care of he's it. He's got some capacity yeah. in the back, yes. Okay, then I have yeah. another question. Yeah. So I'll motion to authorize Ryan to rent the needed pump for two weeks through CoStars. Um, unless a better set of uh, competing bids uh, or invoices, proposals, et cetera, is received. That makes sense. I'll second. <laughs> I second it. We'll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Okay, next item on the agenda is Ryan also made the suggestion that we rent a track hoe, which will allow us to dig faster than the backhoe or to use in addition with the backhoe. Um, I'd want to see rental costs for that, but I don't have any initial reservations about doing that. I just want to see what that would entail. I, I think he has one. I didn't specifically ask, but I did yeah. say to him... Ryan, if we're going to use your equipment, we're going to rent your equipment. Well, yeah, we, would... we don't expect you to give us yeah. your equipment usage for nothing. Could because... we? Well, I mean, obviously, we work this out with them. Yeah. But could we do the same thing that we do with the farmers with renting their equipment for right. the snow removal, the seventy-five dollars an hour or whatever right. it is? Mm -hmm. um, Make sure there's a written agreement. Yeah, if we use his, yeah. yeah, I think he has. I didn't specifically ask him, but I think he has. Uh, I know, I know we have practically where I've been, so yeah. Okay, okay. So, I mean, he didn't give me any prices, so I have no idea. I guess we could check with Wico. Yeah, Wico would have some. I get it. I guess our, the, our key, versus... the key to keep things apples to apples would be finding out how big how his big. model is mm -hmm. yeah. and then calling rental companies around. For that specific. Model. For a model equal yeah. to that okay. to get a rate. Okay. Okay. Just yep. to keep it yep. on the level. Yeah. So you yeah. could get quotes from some other rental companies and then use yeah. that. Yeah. And he can obviously offer to rent it yeah. under that. Right. And then you'd be good. I don't okay. care. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so. yeah. yeah. well, this is nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, but then we have to get it from there to here. Mm -hmm. We can pay for that. Yeah. 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 Either way, let's. Work. let's Look into talk that. to Ryan and look into that and we'll go from there. We still got some some time between now and when we actually start working on it. Yeah. But okay. um, all things being equal, having a track hoe and a back hoe working on it at the same time, it's gonna go twice as fast. So okay. Next item on the agenda is the purchase of signs and poles. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize the purchase of two poles for the speed sign uh, for a total of two hundred and eleven dollars and eighty seven cents. Um, which when it's not Terrible outside. You and I will take a walk on Main Street and find a good site for that. We'll figure it out, mark it out, and then rent a, a post hole bigger order thing for actually setting the posts in. Um, the two road close signs, six detour signs, and two steel plate ahead signs are on order. Uh, in addition to the ice skating rink signs, the park hour signs, and a couple other. Uh, pedestrian crossing, pedestrian ahead, and the no, that was it. So uh, the order everybody has the quotation for that um, from MSI. The total for all of the signs comes to one thousand seven hundred and seventy-one dollars, um, and is for the sake of it, clarity, uh, two ice skating rink signs, twenty-four inch by forty-eight inch, uh, two. Uh, park hour signs at 24 inch by 36 inches, two road closed, 36 inch by 36 inch, three detour right, 24 by 30 inch, three detour left, 24 by 30, two steel plate ahead signs, six pedestrian signs, 30 by 30, fluorescent yellow green, and uh, six ahead signs for being installed under the pedestrian crossing signs. I'll make a motion to approve the, the purchase of those signs from Mainstream Industries for $1,771.
Second. <clears throat> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sorry, I don't think I included that. Sorry. Hmm? Um, I didn't see the digital one, but it's on the table here. So. Oh, that. Was nice. Yeah. I think I got in after. Yeah, I think it was. It got in fairly late. I've been yeah, talking okay. in the past couple of days. Um. It doesn't have to be advertised. So they they may actually from talking to the the guy Jeff. They may have these done by like tomorrow. And if they do, I'll I'll call you and let you know, Butch. But they uh, they seem pretty optimistic that now that they have the the order in, that they can they can move on it pretty quick. Oh, I I really want the steel. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. Next is the equipment repair. Uh, one of the backhoe windows uh, had a little bit, little bit of a bump during some uh, tree clearing and broke. Hmm. So we got a quote from Plaster Equipment to replace the window. The window and installation comes to a total of one thousand three hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty-nine cents. Uh, we are looking to see if this can be covered under our insurance. Well, only um, the five hundred dollars. It's with a five hundred dollar deductible, but uh, we're still waiting to hear back from them. No, if... they asked me if we want to file the claim. Oh, I said, okay. Well, I have to. Claim. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were waiting to see if they if it was one of those things that we could file a claim for. She <clears throat> she said that they I didn't know what the deductible was. Yeah. Because we didn't have that in writing. And she got back to me and said, "It's five hundred dollars. Would you like to file a claim?" Okay. Well, in that case, I'll yes. make I'll make a motion to file a claim. Accidents happen. That's why we have insurance. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Do you want to make a motion to approve that amount? Absolutely. I'll make a motion to approve the amount of uh, one thousand three hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty-nine cents. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Yeah. For the record, it shouldn't be anywhere near that if we do file. It should be 500 bucks for the deductible, and that's... Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, just but, in case. Yeah, just in case. Okay, next so, slide. So, yeah. do I have to wait to let them refile the claim or not? I don't think so. I think um, you can... They they scheduled themselves to come out on Tuesday. Yeah, I would just get it done, and we'll figure out downstream with the insurance. Yeah. Take a picture. Yeah. I took well, some pictures. So. So Jim, Jim's the insurance expert here, I'd imagine. So all I have to do is send her pictures? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I'll point out what I have to do. And then I'll, I'll call him and keep it scheduled. Yeah, yeah keep, so keep the date. Tuesday morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next item is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, McCarthy Engineering has done a site survey. PA1 call was done. There is a gas line running along the east side of Marion Drive uh, to Main Street. Yes, you did. Man, yeah, Dentistry had provided a sum of $5,325 previously for stormwater improvements back in 2014. Uh, Jim McCarthy would like to meet on site. Um, I just didn't get a chance to do that being traveling with work during the month of December. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to set something up with him. But uh, before I did that, I wanted to actually run this by you guys. Since we have the design, we have everything there, um, this might be the ideal time to transition that to Chuck um, and just let McCarthy Engineering know that I'm going to do uh, a walkthrough with, with Chuck on the road. And if we have any questions, we'll reach out. Um, Chuck, would you have any reservations or disagreements with no not at all and actually i was kind of thinking that was going to happen here this past month but that's fine yeah i i was <laughs> just, in the state of whenever Texas. needed you certainly reach out and I'll, I'll be available you bet yeah okay so um do you have any availability next week you don't have to give me a, a hard answer uh, right now but just out of curiosity yes um probably wednesday thursday morning um you want to hit it like for me, it's more convenient to get something here at Marion on, on the way yeah. in first thing in the morning or late in the day. Would you have anything on Thursday? Yeah. Okay. I Thursday Thursday morning? Pencil it in. Okay. Great to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there were a couple of suggestions in there, and if you didn't get that email, I'll be sure to forward it over to you. But okay. um, uh, one of the suggestions was there is actually an existing um, stormwater pipe on the one side of the street that we can tie the 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 current the other one into that and not have to worry about running a, a new length of pipe and we could avoid the whole gotcha. gas line situation. It, it runs right along the side of yeah the property. Yeah, the I garage think there, right? The if if I read the the drawing right, the 
the existing small pipe that we're, we would be looking at extending is on the east side of the road and there is an existing pipe on the west side. Um, so the only thing we would have to do, uh, we want to look at the pipe, obviously, see what kind of condition it's in, see what the kind of rework would be if it's in the right of way, uh, and then just kind of connect that up over to the other pipe. Yeah. Across the road. Then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's yep. that's the kind of the thinking kind of the game motion, huh? yeah <laughs> okay. so we need to look at it and we need to see if that's actually viable or not but um, okay. i think that's our best bet because then we can uh, as minimally as possible disturb anything near that gas line i'm all for that you bet okay uh next is the william penn boulevard culvert um engineer hess received an email from todd geltmacher at red barn about a large concrete stormwater pipe that goes under william penn boulevard and discharges onto roy zartman's property it appears the pipe is in disrepair. Uh, we have some photos that we received. Uh, Engineer Hess suggested that we first determine how deep the right-of-way is in that area and if the unconnected joint is in our right-of-way or if it's the property owner's responsibility. Um, correct yeah, me if I'm, I'm wrong, but we didn't make a motion to authorize Chuck to go out and look at whatever he needs to look I at. I was kind of, I, you know, I responded, okay. I responded back yeah. to, to Todd um, asking for a little more information about where this was at exactly i mean they had a they had a a pending subdivision plan i i suppose um and there was a you know i did see the culvert here under william penn boulevard but i i, I didn't know where the break was and to me you know once it leaves the right of way the township road right away for william penn it's the property owner's responsibility um now I also asked the solicitor to kind of chime in on that a little bit. And I also wonder if there was any prior agreements, probably not, who knows, um, you know, that covered that pipe, uh, which is partially within the township right away and then certainly goes on to the private property. So a couple of factors there, I think, would determine, but I thought it was a little... A mm, little forward to suggest that it was automatically or it was determined that it well, was the a lot of people townships uh, responsibility to a take lot of that people, on. That's the the knee jerk reaction is to assume yeah. that it's it's a pipe, it's the township. Yeah. Right. In, in some cases, it's not depending on where it is. Correct. So yeah. So I would say we we could sit tight, uh, wait to, for them to get back. You know, because I did respond to them with uh, hey some more information and. I wanted to present it to the board or at least make you aware of it. Um, and, and like I said, I haven't heard anything. Now the holidays are yeah. here and what have you. So it may come back, but I think we just wait until it comes back. Okay. Are we able to preemptively see what the, the defined right of way in that section um, is and kind of be armed with again, that for when they come back? They're they're looking at at um, the consultant for, for the property in a red barn obviously is... Um, has some form of subdivision plan here. And I think that mm -hmm. was in the email I, I sent you also. Um, so as part of that subdivision plan, they're they're gonna kind of establish the right of way. This plan doesn't show it because this is just a concept plan, uh, maybe not based on actual field survey or what have you. So the right of way is not really depicted here. Um, but again, they're gonna be doing that research. We'll let them do that research, let them present a case to us um okay because again i take a position with the support of the solicitor if it's outside of the right of way and there's no agreement regarding that pipe then depending where the break is or what have you it may or may not be the township's responsibility okay yeah okay so, um, so we'll just sit tight on that one for the moment yeah i mean if, 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 if the private property owner is alleging that we own the culvert then they should provide proof Okay, most of the time. Yeah. Okay, next is the Comcast franchise renewal. The engagement letter has been signed and emailed to the Cohen Law Group. Uh, we have not heard back from them yet. Oops. The holidays, I don't fully expect to, to see anything until January. So we'll sit tight on that one too. Next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendment, Section 403. This is revising the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Last month, a motion was made to present this to the Western Berks Joint Zoning um, for their planning commission. Um, have we heard anything back from that? I, I know they don't meet at like monthly intervals. They usually meet when something's needed. So, okay, so we'll sit tight on that one and wait to hear. Next is the building property renovations and 
general discussion about a new building. Um, engineer Hess has recommended that we get a specialty contractor in to evaluate the brick wall above the garage that is bowing out. Um, you had sent over several uh, building designs. I had sent over kind of a, a, a mock up of some of the, the key things that I, I wanted to see in, in prior discussion with the board that we wanted to see. Um, you have to forgive me. Did well, you the garage space? Uh, no, that was separate. Okay. Yeah, because that's that's its whole yeah. other thing. Um, I definitely want to have the garage detached from the building for use and liability reasons. Um, so this 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 item here probably should be separated into two. Um, one, the existing township building on the wall. And I have been playing phone tag with, with a contractor um, down in Mount Joy, uh, Whitmer Restoration, that does specialize in this. Um, so I haven't been able to get uh, in contact with them to schedule for them to come out and take a look and, and help us evaluate that. And, and at the same time, maybe even uh, provide some estimation of what repair costs might be and what the repairs might entail. So more info to come on that. Um, the, and, and separating that item is really then the new township building. Um, so yes, thank you, Peter, for the, um, the, the mock-up of the floor plan that you yeah. sent. That was a good help. So we went ahead and 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 I'm going to leave a copy here for you. This is this is the draft. Again, I, we took we took your your layout and kind of um, put it to scale. Um, it's not again. This is a working drawing. This mm -hmm. is not final. And and one comment I'll have is because your office. I'm thinking the office up front here. We did not put a door in there. So you can't get into the office. You can't get out of the office. Okay. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna build you in. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, we thought we thought that's a good way to get a little more productivity out. Of here. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, the door got eliminated because we realized the sketch you provided, the mm -hmm. bathroom you wanted in that area, it was too small. So the wall pushed to that right in line with with the um, where the door was shown, and furthermore, then the question comes up to a little bit of how you want to operate um, with with like a reception window or a pass-through window. Yes. Yeah. And yes. whether you want that out here in this hallway yes. or they actually come in. So no, I'm, again, so I'm going to leave this and I'll email this for okay. to everyone. Yeah. So what we were kind of envisioning is like doctor's office sliding mm -hmm. class right there. Here. That way Sue has kind of gatekeeper control. Mm -hmm. Somebody can come in yep. if they're getting unruly. She can leave and they can't get into the building. Yeah, because we were um, questioning what your thought was. Yeah. You know, you're because this is like a vestibule yeah. windbreak. Yeah. So whether or not people came into this area and then the window would be here. Oh, sorry. No, we figured and, this would be kind of the, okay. the holding area for people, okay. but we'd also be able to, I think the, the one that I had, we had a, another door over here. Yeah. That way, if we had like a meeting, mm -hmm. we could just open this up and you can kind of section right. things kind off. Of you to can control so where other. Okay. I'm going to leave this one yeah. here. And, you know, again, I think, you know, use this, mark it up, do whatever. If you work in Bluebeam or something, I'll send you the yeah. PDF and we'll, we'll, we'll work on refining this because what this is doing is kind of getting us, and I wrote here, you know, you're, you're right about 6,900 square feet. Okay. Um, so the next thing I would do is kind of look at and see for the <laughs> assembly area and the various uses, you know, how much parking would be required for, for your zoning. Yeah. Um, Kind of put that in. Next discussion is a little bit the garage, and you, you're saying now an attached garage. Attached. Okay, separated. Oh, yeah, and that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. I thought it was separated yeah. before, you know, and and work on that because ultimately I think we're working towards maybe does does this campus fit on this property, or do we look for another property? <laughs> yeah, um, which brings up another <laughs> point. I think we talked last month about the restriction on the sale of this property because of the pool that they're on the Yeah, yeah. So I think that was next. Ah, uh, was nice. next. I got ahead. Nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll leave this paper copy here, and then I'll Thank follow you. up and email to everybody this sketch. Okay. Um, and again, all input is welcome. In addition, from the man in the back, because of his uh, ideas here for this being a, an evacuation or an emergency uh, okay. uh, response center, because um, I know I, us to other oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, and there's some things too. Like I, I know there was a kitchen, and we didn't show it, but we're going to adjust a little bit. 
you know, we have a like a movable wall or partition mm -hmm. wall that can come in and out. So I'm thinking we should shift that a little bit to allow this kitchen to have a pass through window there. Yeah, like a roll up agreed. window. Completely agreed. And then that can either serve the whole thing or one half of the space. Um, you know that froze. Yeah, I, I know. So it's still running on the okay. the actual Zoom. So I don't know why it does that. I can figure that out. Thank you very much. Evan. Yeah. Yeah. We well, really you know, this it. is how you get yeah. everybody's input and work yeah. towards it. Um, you know, we can certainly assist with the overall project. Mm -hmm. At some point, though, I, I am a little out of my expertise, and we would bring in an architect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, anybody you want to work with, yeah. we can make suggestions um, to put their touch on it with regard to the exterior look of the building, mm -hmm. uh, finishes, door schedules, things like that. But um, all any of the engineering, structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing in the building, we can take care of. But the architect does, and they, they are worth something someday. So yeah. uh, I, guess I think it, it would be good to engage one at some point um, yeah. for that. So that'll be here. And I'll follow up with the emails on that. Um, that's that's great. Plan. Thank you for, yeah. for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. I've got a quick question. Are we able to incorporate newer technologies like solar? Sure. Why not? Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Um, and and actually, I got to share this. I'm working with another municipality that we're a, probably three months ahead. Mm -hmm. We have a floor plan now mm -hmm. that we're refining, and they're looking for funding. They're considering solar. There's been some, apparently some recent changes in tax law, which I don't understand because uh, I'm hearing, and I can't confirm this, but municipalities and governments now can get tax credits, but I don't, I didn't we're not paid tax. No, we're, yeah. so that, yeah. that part didn't, I yeah. didn't understand that, but you, you, maybe there's rebates then or something. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But just, they're yeah. searching for funding opportunities because there's a lot of this ARPA yeah. money and what have you out there. So uh, anything I learn over there, I'll share over here. Thank you. Um, and yeah. you can piggyback on that. And um, yeah, because it seems like there's potential for even more money coming out. I mean, it's slowly coming out from the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. Mm -hmm. um, the state received a lot of money and they held on to it. And now they just released it mm -hmm. through the ARPA H2O program. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, though, getting what you want mm -hmm. and a concept goes a long way because then we can provide uh, construction cost estimates. And both of those components are really needed for any grant application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to know what, what you want to build and what it's going to cost to be able to ask for some assistance with funding. Yeah. yeah. So this is, it's not a wasted exercise mm -hmm. if, if you're going to push through with that. that. I think yeah. that's the direction that we, we all recognize yeah. needs to go. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I mean, part part of my my goal with this also, if we're going to be considered an evacuation site, we'll need generators. We'll need everything to make us like basically an island in in, in this area. It's like all power goes, etc. So it's having this yeah. kind of self sufficient uh, type of a building. One of the things yeah. that I had on on the design yeah. and, and Chuck and his group kept it there is a, a dedicated room for like the HVAC, yeah. the electrical, yeah. all that stuff. So we yeah. could have panels for like the generator or things yeah. for like the solar cutover. Yep. And I, in talking to, because I, I briefly mentioned this, the architect I'm working with, um, we got to be a little careful on what we call this as an evacuation center, what have you, because the code requirements mm -hmm. go up a notch. Mm -hmm. Um we may have to do so that but, it could be, grant funding. but if yeah. you're looking if yeah. this is what it's going to be yeah. Yeah. that's what it is yeah. Yeah. i because, just warn you that that yeah. even just calling it something may elevate right. yeah. the code requirements and therefore the construction costs yeah. for yeah. that building you know it has to be um, I, I think i think the concept was marion township community center and yeah. i just want to think john correct me if i'm wrong there's no where would people potentially evacuate to with the major disaster the high school this, right, but, but we don't have anything, and then there's nothing going towards Lebanon County too, correct? So, like, we're we're this like little point in between two different counties mm -hmm. that could be utilized in the event of a major disaster. So, and and that's what we're going to hopefully try to build on for grants. Yeah, and that that goes a long way yeah. on, on your yeah. grant applications because the more people you can service. Mm -hmm. 
or show that you can service will go a long way towards, you know, favorable consideration of funding. Makes yeah. the story more compelling when you yeah, have exactly. to, yeah. have to ask for money. Great, great yeah. story. And fire suppression. We need the place adequately wired. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Air conditioning. Yeah. You know that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think yeah. for for next month, Sue, yeah. can we can we split sixteen yes. into two? One yes. for uh, required reno or renovations and repairs to old building, new building items. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only other thing that I wanted to add on to that was Sue did reach out, talk to a property owner not really interested in selling right now, but that may change. Um, one of the other suggestions that I had at the workshop was maybe we should get in contact with um, Steve Benich you know, to see if we could get some of the, the frontage that he has there. That's along uh, Main Street-ish because then we'd be on the right side of 422. We'd be kind of nestled in amongst all the communities that we have, Main Street, the village, Shady Cabin Circle, Canal, yeah, et cetera. Um, I'll show you on the map yeah, after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but maybe see if we could work something out with him to, to do that. And then potentially there would be a little bit of a distance between the two things. But if we can sever the, the, the deed restriction with Conrad Weiser, we could keep the existing playground property even. Mm -hmm. um, so we would need less actual land mass from mm -hmm. him in order to, to put the township building in the garage. So one, one other question, and I mentioned it because the gentleman sitting in the back who tried to back over me in the parking lot before the meeting, but uh, is there any need to incorporate a, a, a police, uh, a room for a police officer? We, sh they, we shouldn't because we contract through uh, Popahawken. Okay. Um, and that's the same thing with this other municipality I'm working with. They contract through an adjacent municipality, but mm -hmm. they're providing a room with its own exterior uh, entrance for their police officers. To, we can, we can check when they're on patrol or whatever, or they have, you can check with the chief, but I think it's really yeah. good. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it would just be one. Yeah. You know, ask the question now so that right. you don't get yeah. criticized right. later for excluding it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let me know on yeah. that. I mean, um, what's been the growth of Marion Township over, what did we grow? 200 people oh, since the well, last census. Don't draw. Yeah. 200 That's people since the last census. Yeah. And so, because there's such little room for development, I don't think. We're not going to have such a big population boom. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I get it. You, yeah, you, 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 and you don't want to operate a police department. Yeah, we used to, we used to have. Uh, we used to. Yeah. 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 There's a reason <laughs> you don't have. Um, Boston. but yeah. Nonetheless, yeah. contracting that police yeah. service if they're coming from a from a distance or what have you, having some facility here for them, or you know, little, even just an office might yep. be something that you can say. Hey, that we can be great. We, we can ask. I think John, you want to. Yeah, we that's some of the stuff we actually did look into and talk about whether there's an actual like police substation for them. Right. That's so the term. You know, we're yeah, assuming everything's gonna be a two pod access under emergency management. Mm -hmm. But law enforcement, they have full access to that. You know, they don't have to drive all the way back out to go to the bathroom, let's say. Right. But you know, it's all of a sudden storm opens up on them, he can get off the road and get shelter and stuff like that. You know, any of the officers on duty. But again, it's just whether it's an actual police substation or part of emergency response, whatever. So. Well, the way the and John, I'd, I'd love to have you take a look at the the drawings too, get your opinion on that. But the way I kind of laid things out is so that we can kind of cordon off the building. So let's say like one of the police officers had badge access to the front door, but they can't get past the the initial part of the the hallway, which has the bathrooms in it. Um, so you could get people in and out like that, but not have them get into like, say, the office or oh, the yeah. file room. Yeah. Yeah. Security yeah. So you can change what he has access to. I, I yeah. Ever yeah. Stop yeah. One other suggestion I might have is give it some thought that maybe, because I know you have, you know, maybe different community organizations. There's the, mm -hmm. the mm. museum or the historical part of it maybe identify key stakeholders that are going to be part of this building and identify those individuals so we could bring them in at some point to share with them the plan, get their input and feedback. Is, unless that's a crazy idea. No, I mean I'm I'm not against okay. it. I think when we when we get closer to time yeah, for, yeah, for that's that what sort of thing. Get it some thought of um, who would you want to engage you know, we can, in we that. could get the community association the 
Actually, we're just gonna move everything from upstairs and put it in the hallways. Yeah, and display it. So yeah. You can see it well, I actually way. on yeah. on the design, I had two rooms. Yeah, yeah. Like That's a insane. room and a half uh, for that, and a door on that side, so that you could potentially have people come in and use the building without getting into the, the main meeting space yeah. or again the office or the kitchen or anything like that. Have it in the halls. Have it in the behind glass. There's there's too much. Oh. Well, there's some stuff. Much. I mean, yeah. Stuff yeah. yeah. Stuff. I'd like yeah. to keep some stuff out. Yeah. Be yeah. Just yeah. Full and a half. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. it's a lot. And wall cabinets yeah. or displays yeah. too. Yeah. I, I like the concept of having the almost like museum yeah. quality to it, but I, I agree we should have some stuff prominently displayed in the entryways and the hallways and like the meeting room and things like that. Uh, things that really kind of lend themselves to the, the character of, of Marion Township. Yeah, but, you called it a history room and an alumni room. Yeah. That's what they're called now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, next is one of the things that we had mentioned before, which is the uh, deed restrictions on the, uh, the current township property. Um, where we had left off, we're gonna be seeking that uh, we asked the school district to, uh, I guess, revert or dissolve the rest of the claim on the deed would be maybe the right thing to say. Right. So the, the deed consists of two per, per oh, parts. Yeah. Per part one is property upon which this building sits. And per part two is the park across the street. Per part one is restricted to a municipal or an authority use. Mm. And per part two is restricted to playground use. Um, I, I've drafted a letter requesting that the school district release us from both covenants to give the township the most flexibility. Huh? And it, in that letter, I've, you know, I've stated the reasons why mm -hmm. the township is looking to, you know, evaluate their options and hopefully relocating, um, you know, their municipal office, but ultimately that can't be done unless at least this portion of the property is, is sold. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like the board to motion to, to authorize my sending on that letter subject to your final review. Yeah, I'll make that motion right, right did now. did that on Saturday. Uh, yeah, okay. I was say, I, I, okay. I, I'm all for that. Yeah. We, can't, we can't do that soon enough. Yeah. So, you, made, you made the motion. Okay. Outside. Thank you for reminding me. In that yourself. case, I'll, I'll send the letter to the board for its review yeah. and... I'll wait for you to get back to me with any feedback and then I'll send that out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and that would be good timing too, because if, if, if you do get release on that covenant, mm -hmm. we'll look at the property configuration here because the building configuration there is pretty much square, mm -hmm. but we may take a different configuration to fit it on this property. So knowing that sooner than later would be good. Okay. And then it would incorporate redoing the playground mm -hmm. at the same time too. Yeah. And like I said, if we were somewhere relatively close by, we don't necessarily, even if we can keep the playground, don't even have to move that. We can just renovate what we have. But, yeah, yeah. So. Better, better um, ADA accessible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's a laundry list oh, of things yeah. that like yeah. we in the MTCA are looking to do to the playground oh, yeah. space. But um, the bottom line is we might even be able to get funding for that at the same time through yeah. some of those like yeah. ARP things um, and kind of go from there. Okay, next item on the agenda is the adoption of the 2023 budget. This was accepted at the October 27th Board of Supervisor meeting, advertised on November 4th, and has been available for public inspection. We did not receive any requests to inspect the budget. Uh, a motion will be needed to adopt the 2023 budget, so I'll make that motion now. I'll make a motion to adopt the 2023 budget. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item is to adopt the real estate, street light, and sewer levy tax rates. The real estate tax is to be set at 2.75 mils for the proposed budget, street light tax at $0.65 per front footage, and this has to be uh, done through resolution 2022-8. Uh, so I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-8 to set the tax rates for real estate at 2.75 mils. Street light at 65 cents per front foot. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the terms expiring for January 2023. Uh, all have agreed to serve another term except for Nancy Carrington, who has moved out of the township. These are appointed at the reorganization meeting. 
We have the following seats that are, are opening. Uh, Mervyn Brubaker on the Planning Commission, David Weaver on Zoning Hearing, uh, Nancy Carrington on Vacancy Board, Kelly Cox and Christina Curland are interested in this position, uh, and then John Seleski, who is the Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, everyone has agreed to serve another round of term, um, and then we had kind of Wade Kelly versus Christina, and I think you had said this Christina was interested only if somebody else wasn't. Okay, she, she'll she step up to the plate and fill that if we need her to, and if Kelly would like it, Kelly can have it. Okay, so, so we'll do that on the third. Yeah. Okay, next is we have received donation requests from Helping Harvest, Burke's History Center, Conrad Weiser High School Graduation Party, and the Wilmersdorf Community Library, along with Burke's Nature. Which leads us to the next item on the agenda, which is to approve the donations for 2023. Uh, last year, we had uh, donated to Berks County Library, $50, Berks Nature, $200, Center for Excellence in Local Government, or CELG as it's more fr frequently known, of $50, Crime Alert, Berks County, $100, Wolmelsdorf Community Library, $200, Helping Harvest Food Bank, $150, and the Wolmelsdorf Fire Company, $100. We had some discussion at the workshop this past weekend, uh, which included changing Burke's Nature to $50, CELG to $100, and the Wilmersdorf Fire Department to $150, along with the Conrad Weiser Grad Party, $50. Um, so I'm going to try to get this right. So uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve donations for 2023 of the Berks County Library, fifty dollars. Wait, to Conservation District first. Uh, okay, Berks County Conservation District. That first line. This is the first line. Oh, that's the first line. I missed it. I'm sorry. Um, so I, I I apologize. Let me actually amend what I had previously said. In in the mix of all of that is the Berks County Conservation District, six hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I missed that because the line was justified. It, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the donations for 2023. The Berks County Conservation District of $650. The Berks County Library of $50. Berks Nature of $50. The Center for Excellence in Local Government to $150. The so $100. $100. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Trying to bounce around here. Uh, Crime Alert, Berks County, $100. Wommelsdorf Community Library, $200. Helping Harvest Food Bank, $150. And the Wommelsdorf Fire Company, $150. And, and, the Conrad and the Conrad Weiser Grad Party, $50. Thank you. Okay, got it. Is your second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Just a quick question on that. Do you have that stuff coming to see in the folders? Let's stick it in, in my folders. Yeah, I know C-Lig is weird because that has to be done online, but now we have, yeah, now we have the credit cards, so that can be yeah. done that way, so that makes it a little bit easier. Actually, I'll see if the other ones have yeah. some online stuff, too, to make it easier. Some of the envelopes, so I yeah. really look at them. Yeah, no, thank I'd you. I imagine most of them probably yeah. stuff online. That was, that was my difficulty last year was with C-Lig, but everyone else so was more than happy to receive a check, and we usually get a thank you back, yeah. so. Usually, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next is the professional services solicitation letters. We receive these every year. Uh, we have received ones from Acela Architects and Engineers and the Animal Rescue League. Um, at this point, no action needed on either. As a point of a, uh, fact, Craft uh, Code Services and Craft Engineering are combining as of January 1st, 2023, mm -hmm. and will become the Craft Municipal Group. Uh, there are no major changes that will affect how they serve their municipality. It's largely just a consolidation of the two services that they offered previously. Uh, next is the 2023 fee schedule for professional services. Uh, we have received this from System Design Engineering, Craft Municipal Group, Kozlov Stouts, uh, Berks and Virotech, which will keep theirs the same for 2023. Uh, and we have not received the fee schedule from attorney Keith Mooney. I didn't um, hear anything from them, which is odd. So I'll reach out to them next week. And okay. Them. Thank you. Okay. Um, we adopt, or we'll need to adopt these at the January 2023 Board of Supervisors meeting by resolution. Uh, next item is the PSATS membership dues. Uh, we received the invoice for this and we'll need to make a motion to pay the dues. Uh, we'll also need to make a motion to add Linda to the PSATS roster and authorize the subscription to the Pennsylvania Township News Magazine. Let me, let me, move. so yeah. at the workshop, didn't we discuss we that did. we'd rather just get one thing here and like one of the magazines here, because I get it at home, but I, maybe it gets read, maybe it doesn't get read. 
Um, I'm usually reading the material online. So did we still want to, like, I guess. Uh, I mean, I'd say if we thin down, like, I know you already, you said yeah. that they gave us the, the invoice for it. But... Right, they gave us the invoice, but I didn't pay it. No, I, they yeah. said if we want to add Linda, we have to add her to the invoice. But what about the other, like, can we, already on here? Yeah, no, can we just get one magazine delivered to the building? Like, why? Uh, I can tell you this is not going to get passed around. No, no, no. But I'm saying, um, what can yeah. anybody that say. still wants to get one at their house, we keep that in place. But like, for example, me, Irene, Jim, I don't know how religiously you, you read it, but if we could take the three that we get mm -hmm. and switch it to one that comes to the township building, and then we can look at it at our, our discretion. So the, um, the people who get the magazine are Dan Klein, Harold Manbeck, Irene Selesky, Peter McCarthy, and me. Okay, so I would say like we can thin Irene and I's down to one and see if Dan. I don't know. Just telling you who gets them. Okay. Yeah. So I, I since I have the bill, I'll give a call and I'll thin it down. Just leave me a note and I'll give them a call. Right, so just cross all yeah things then. Yeah. If you made the correct make the corrections on here is what yeah. you do. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect anything else that we do with the website because mm -hmm. it's the township. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah this the bill the dues lists everything that we pay for. Okay. How much is the subscription of the magazine? Thirty nine thirty nine dollars. Each. Yes. Each. Each. Yeah, it's not a yeah. it's not a huge sum, but I mean it's it's, it's every it's it's thirty nine bucks. I know. I know. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm saying. I think that's reading a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's postage. Yeah. It's 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 a lot of things yeah. that we try no. to so just make the correction on here yeah. before you okay. send it and check in. Okay. I'll make sure I'm in the office with you before I do it so we remember. Thank you. Yeah. That was my only thing about the billing because I did not send that out. Okay. So so you just need to make a motion to pay them. So I'll make a motion to pay the membership dues subject to revisions. The, the revisions as discussed. Second. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. I, I know it's a, it, it might seem like a trivial thing. Oh, it's every little bit counts. Every, any way I could save money, we, we try. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next is the PSATS 2022 salary survey is now available. If you're interested in filling that out, please feel free. Well, it's filled out. We're, it, I already did it. Oh, you already did it. Okay. And now it's available to view. Okay. And it just compares any municipality in Pennsylvania who fills that information out, then they report each category. Okay. I so thought... it gives you a, a least amount paid and highest amount paid. You can see I'm, how much people are paid. I'm thinking of something like else that. then. There was some other salary thing we did with PSATs at one point. I want to make this is a survey that our it's it was due months ago. Okay, uh, okay, that's probably what I'm thinking and of because I was going to say like October, okay. November, usually. What is it usually like in October and November that we fill that out? Well, I think it's due by October. It's okay, that's yeah. that's probably what I'm thinking yeah. of then. Okay, um, okay, well then, and it's for every like single sub. Yeah. Thing, so, like imaginable. Yeah. <laughs> public yeah. service, public works, public. Uh, administration like beliefs like whatever it's yeah. on there yeah. okay okay next is the psats 2023 educational conference and exhibit show this will be held on april 23rd through 26th at the hershey lodge registration opens january 10th 2023 and can be done online for 175 dollars per person a uh, motion was made at the workshop meeting to authorize the attendance by any interested supervisors secretary treasurer or members of the road crew so if you are any one of those individuals and you want to attend, please let Sue know. That way we can get that. Registration open January. Yeah. Do you folks go as a group on Monday, Tuesday, oh, or? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, you just, you I, just go independently? Yeah. I can tell you I won't be going because it's the last week of the month. That's meeting uh, week. I don't have time to go to a conference that week. Yeah. yeah. It depends what time of the month it is. Yeah. I go. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't know until closer to time. Yeah. So, but. Uh, next is uh, Berks County UCC Board of Appeals membership. The membership fee is $300. I'll make a motion to pay the membership fee for the UCC Board. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. 
Next is the Morgan Stanley data breach reimbursement. Uh, we received a check for $25 for this. Uh, former Secretary Janice Cern and Secretary Susan Stabi uh, were involved in this. Um, that's all we're going to see out of this. Yes, and, and I think each of them should get $12.50. $12.50, I, I agree. Yes. Um, do you want to make that motion? I'd like to make a motion to reimburse former Secretary Janice Stern and current Secretary Susan Stabi for the amount of $12.50 each uh, as a result of the Morgan Stanley data breach reimbursement. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Buy a beer. All right. The whole thing. You know, it's, it's better than nothing. You know, what we filled out, we, we clicked on the thing and. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. easy. Okay. Last item on the agenda is the. Uh, proposal for December 26th as a paid holiday. The federal holiday for Christmas is celebrated on Monday, December 26th. Um, it was uh, mentioned that the board would like to give the holiday off with pay for anybody that would be normally working those hours. I'll make a motion to approve December 26th as a paid holiday for the secretaries. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Question. Yes. What about January? Same problem. Um, first. Is January 1st also? It's a Sunday. Uh, second. Second. Yeah, the second. second. We'll have to make a motion to uh, change that as well. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, I'll make a motion to approve January 2nd as a paid holiday for the secretaries as observation for New Year's. So the second or the third? Second. Second. Is there a second? Second. Irene, second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't realize when you said second if it was you meant like January 2nd or second. So that's a that's a who's on first situation. The Monday is the second. Yeah. 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 So was there another issue with the the holidays and stuff i forgot what well that the, we have to discuss it really okay yeah. okay just yeah, that's, uh, remind us please yeah, yeah that's where yeah. We, we chew on that one as we figure out what days okay. are holidays. i just you to, like designate mention the holidays that are going to be paid and then mention the paid time block yeah and like, okay. separate it yeah okay so it's very clear yeah. okay it's not clear okay hey peter peter mm -hmm. yes. the board should make a motion to amend the agenda to include the motion January. you just made. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank sure. you. I'll make a motion to amend the agenda to include the two paid holiday motions. Second. If you need me to repeat that, so I'll make a motion yeah, to uh, amend the agenda to include the two paid holidays uh, motions that we just made. We just have to do the January one because I have the joint 26 one. Oh, yeah. So we yeah. do, yeah. And then so Jim seconded it. January 2nd. Yes. Okay. Is there a second? Jim seconded it. Roll call, Peter. Aye. 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 Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, that is that is the final item on the agenda. So we'll move into comments. Um, I do or should have the police report here. I just got to scroll to it. Um, it is, I think, partially cut off. Uh, I can I can read it like this. There's really like there's a whole lot of zeros on it. Well, we used the copier this time. Yeah, we can figure out how to. It's okay. Um, there's, there's, yeah, there's got to be a way to do it. But, um, there's really not a lot of action this past month. I think there were, from looks of it, like 22 security checks, but like no citations or anything like that. Um, 656 miles of road patrolled. Um, so thank you again to Topak and PD for what they do month in and month out. I don't know if he's paying attention back there, but yeah, Larry. Yeah. Thank, thank you for everything you do, Larry. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, I wasn't okay. Well, yeah. like I said, I, I have half of the page and it's sideways. So yeah. Um, this is for November. This is for November because we didn't get December yet. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. How many how many citations did we have? Uh, okay, so four citations. Uh, how many traffic stops was that? The the sixth, right above it. Six traffic. Yeah, six six traffic stops, four citations. 
Okay. And then I have a couple more comments. Uh, the farmers had brought up at the workshop meeting. Um, they were looking to have an increase in the yeah, rental cost and service cost for having them go out and remove snow. Uh, they were asking for $100 an hour, which is a $25 an hour increase. Um, this is something that we should discuss um, based on the fact- Decided at reorg. I, I know, but I'm just saying this is something we should discuss uh, simply because there has been a, a pretty marked increase in fuel costs over the past year. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure that we're observing, and Butch, your your hand is on the wheel here, is that they only go out and do snow removal when you engage them. That they do not just bill hours for clearing their own driveways necessarily. Um, that and I think they are saying that. Good, good, because that's it's a good good thing. I really do appreciate their help, but we have to have checks and balances in place to make sure that it's a a well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as Sue mentioned, we'll decide that at reorg. But I want everybody to to give that some solid thought over the next uh, one to two weeks, um, and kind of be ready for that on that meeting. Um, the other thing is the office will be closed tomorrow, December twenty third, twenty twenty two. No, uh, no. Uh, you have a sign in there. It's closing at noon. Say again? Closing, at, closing noon. at noon. Close at noon. Oh, okay. So I take that back. The office is closed tomorrow at noon. Yes. Um, you could have just ran with it, Sue. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you say that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. No, you're on. You're on record now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so just to just to reiterate, the office will be closed at noon tomorrow, December twenty third, twenty twenty two. Um, it's okay. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch on is I'd like to move the meetings from Zoom to Teams. Yes. Uh, next year, there's a number of things that we can do a little differently and are actually more cost effective. Um, we can get the the same sort of subscription with Microsoft for eight dollars a month rather than the like fourteen, fifteen dollars or whatever it is with Zoom. Um, and part of that, because we are a governmental entity, there is a a package plan that they have for eight dollars that includes the the Microsoft Teams license, but also has access to a terabyte of OneDrive storage, mm -hmm. and it meets governmental data standards. So we do not have to worry about any of the weirdness that we have to with putting certain things on the Google Drive or not, uh, because they meet the like DOD and whatever the other, like, there's like five or six different data security standards that have to be met by governmental entities. Um, so this is something where we could do a full offsite backup of all of our data without fear of uh, data classification or data storage uh, legal requirements. Cool. It's, um, it's the Microsoft 365 governmental G1 is the license. Um, and if you have any questions about like your your business and stuff like that, there are business plans that I can, I can help you navigate What's that. What's the name of it? It's uh, Microsoft 365. Um, so I'll, I'll talk to you separately about that, Jim, but I, I had looked to see if we would fall better into like the business category because the billing's a little different with that. Um, or the governmental thing. Um, yeah. If we decide to go that route at some point, there is uh, a thing up for users. I think it's like 22 bucks a month, mm -hmm. but um, rather than buying like a Microsoft Office subscription for like 2016 mm -hmm. and then it's just there, you can have a desktop installed thing and every time they release a new version, you just get it as part of your okay. subscription. Um, I don't know that we need to go that route yet, but we may get to that point. But for eight bucks a month, we can do the meetings online and have, uh, quite frankly, more storage than we're we're going to need anytime soon uh, as a a cold offsite backup. Well, so, I think I I'll, guess with that, yeah, use the township credit card, please. Okay, I will. I, make it that when, much when, when we do yeah. that, yeah. Um, one of the things that I want to do, and again, if we have a, a moment tonight, is I'll I'll restart the computer and we can do a, a quick Teams call. Like I'll call it from my phone and you can kind of see what it looks like. It's oh, okay. It's really, really similar to Zoom if you've not used it. Joe did a Teams call. Yeah. Um, Jim, when they did that call when you were driving, mm -hmm. that was a Teams call. Was it? Yeah, and it's pretty much like Zoom. Yeah, and so we, we, we use Teams almost exclusively at work. And honestly, it's better than Zoom in my opinion. Okay. Um, and with this, we'd have all the, the recordings and mm -hmm. everything else that we'd want to do with it. And it's half the half the cost. So I'll put together the proposal for that, but the only asterisk item on that is we would have to advertise the change in the meeting URL. No We'd problem. have to say that we're switching from Zoom to Teams and that the link is available out on the website or the mm -hmm. YouTube channel, you know. So 
Um, the other thing is there's actually, there's an email address included with that. It's again, it's pennies relatively speaking, but we could convert the hosting of the office at Marion Township Berks email that we use for like the Google drive and everything else. We could switch the back end of that over to Microsoft and eliminate a, a small uh, te technical line item for email hosting. Um, other thing that I had that I thought about earlier today was um, for next year, I'd like to either cost out a podium or build one. They're not complicated. Just get some MDF. Um, that way public comment is at a podium there and we can actually hang mm -hmm. the camera mm -hmm. right in the center and have the whole board straight on. Mm -hmm. um, again, not overly complicated, not overly complex. I don't know what the cost of these things is, but I'd, I'd like to, to move to that rather than just having the, the table there with the mic sitting. Some of these used furniture stuff. Yeah, right? that's, I, I had looked on Craigslist to see if there was anything, because we don't need anything fancy. We just need something where we can put a mic on the top, and we can put a camera on the front, and that's it. So we'll hunt around. I'll get some prices on that. But just gave one three months ago. Oh, <laughs> timing, timing, timing. Um, I never even thought. Hey, it's, it's okay. I only thought about it today when I was sitting here. I was like, you know what would make this better? Having an actual podium there where people would, could come up and do their comment. Um, I'm feeling power standing on yeah, the podium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also makes it easier on the camera because I can get yeah. the camera kind of sighted in on that. But um, last thing I have is Merry Christmas, Happy Belated Hanukkah, and Happy New Year's to everybody. I hope everyone stays safe over the next couple of weeks. Um, and we'll see you at the, the reorg meeting. Um, other, Irene, do you have any comments you want to add on that? Uh, yeah, actually, Linda, if you just look, look at like, what? <laughs> Um, adding in with some of the stuff that Peter mentioned, would you be able to help me figure out what, how we could do a newsletter? Yeah. Um, just something that we could type out to the residents, including like some of that information. Mm -hmm. There's some information, sorry, Tim. There's some information we'd like to get out like routinely just on, Hey, remember you're supposed to clear your sidewalks. Um, this is new. This is, you know, I put some ordinances is there for sidewalk clearing. Okay. Yeah. Not a friend of your computer. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and uh, so okay, your needs like, yeah, like hey, this is new. And this is I upcoming. think coming. Put that on the website. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. put that one on, and the snow emergency one. Okay. Yeah, and so this week, you and I can like figure out something. We can put out something twice a year, uh, spring, summer release, of fall, winter stuff, and mm -hmm. kind of keep it going. Even if it's sending out the same thing every year, mm -hmm. or maybe just a little bit of updates. So, for example, yeah. what Peter just mentioned, just you know, we could have that like kind of on. Um, autopilot so that we say, hey, it's this date, we need to get this out. And, you know, if there's reminders, we can still work ball and winter. Yeah. yeah. One. Yeah. Four, no, no, just, just twice. Like we do two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. One of the things we could do, and we had kind of alluded to this uh, at the, the workshop, is if we can start to build kind of a Rolodex of people's address, phone number, and email, we could start cataloging people's preferences for like, don't send me a paper newsletter, just send me an email. That'd be mm -hmm. super easy. Same, um, same thing. What was that? Same same exactly. Same on printing and posting. And the other thing is if we have people's phone numbers, um, we it's very inexpensive. We could set up a robo dialer for right. if there is a snow emergency or if there's flooding on canal, but we could get it yeah. to dial either the whole township or selected groups of people to let them know that, hey, there's a snow emergency. You're not going to be able to park on Main Street or Canal Road is flooded. You're going to have to wait until the flooding subsides, um, that sort of thing. But what we need is the data behind it to be able to support the systems. The systems themselves are not overly complex. That's, that's we, actually a good suggestion for mm -hmm. the tax bureau. Mm -hmm. They could put, even if they wrote optional, yeah. they could put email and telephone. Email, right? like, well, we'd have all of them. Yeah, because I mean, we can, it, at, at its heart, it's basically a glorified spreadsheet that we could have resident address, well, phone number, email, newsletter preference, yeah. um, call me for emergencies. And just that's that's what you can back into a, a robo dialer. So if we say like, okay, anybody that's Canal Road, Sheridan Road, blah, 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 call. And it would just go through with a pre-recorded message that says like, there's flooding. Please be advised from the hours of 8 p.m. to 2 p.m. You'll have hazardous conditions and may not be able to pass the road or in the case of snow emergency, the same sort of thing with the adult park on Main Street. Um, yeah, that's, that, that was the suggestion that I had is like, maybe we can ask Conrad Weiser if they're willing to share or if they're legally able to share what they have for. I think so. So we get random emails from Civic Plus. I think they do that. Yeah. I mean, obviously for fee. Yeah. I yeah. We, we want to assess them. But like I had did some, some poking around for options and like the 
the, the relatively minimal one, because we don't do this a whole lot, was I think 20 or 30 bucks a month or something like that to do that. And that was with like, if we did one or two of these every month. So it's it's not a huge cost. It's not like we're going to be breaking the bank by doing this. Um, we just, to put it bluntly, we don't have the data that the system requires to input into it to make it function right. One other thing is if you do do robocalls, mm. it would be nice to have, this is a robocall, no re do yeah. not respond. Yeah. Right in the message. Oh, yeah. So, so that people are aware. So I, I worked yeah. in a call center for a number of years. So okay. I know I know some of the things that Sorry. you have to. No, 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 no. no I'm just, I'm just letting you know that any anytime you do that sort of thing, and it's the same thing with the school district that you say, like, hi, this is a pre recorded call from Marion Township to notify you of. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just very simple little things that yeah. you do for that. Or in the case of like, if you're, if you're on the phone with somebody and you're recording it, you have to declare that yeah. um, for legal reasons in, in PA. Uh, but we can workshop that closer to time. But the bottom yeah. line is we need to get some of the, the underpinning bits together to be able to support anything like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's the, the best option um, rather than uh, relying on people seeing the stuff on WMFMZ for like the snow emergencies. Or, that would be just um, amazing. They do look for it. I, I know, they do, they do. But it's, 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 another, it's another avenue. Yeah. that we can we can cast the net out there relatively effectively thanks Larry. Happy thank you Larry. happy new year happy holidays yes thank you we could put the snow emergency on the website for now too as a this, yeah we can put that in as a banner yeah 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 it's nice to be moving forward with things yeah it's just it's it's finding the right thing making it work and then standardizing uh -huh. it, getting a process in place um john's got his hand up one of the classes I'm Currently in 347, FEMA is on the use of the alert system. That it's funny, is Berks County literally sent me this afternoon my password and all that stuff to get into the system to create those messages. And it's, and it's, it's couple, still a couple of months to get a training yet, mm -hmm. verification, what, so you can't just, just there's a lot of redundant checks. So you can't just go in and pick stuff up, whatnot. But, yeah. Um, it goes off the geographical area, off of the near South Tower. And it's, we're trying to figure that out because we don't want to send a message out that like seven townships yeah. are going to be based off of that, but it's going to be off the uh, the numbers and what the cell emails and some things. It's a plethora of access that we're going to have. Anybody that has the weather radios, stuff like that. In that designated area, okay. Thank you. So, it's pretty so scary. But. Should we maybe build in a like communications portion of like the emergency management plan for like when to invoke it, what to invoke it for, and then like the process of like all the stuff in the class that I'm doing right now. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So yeah. I think it's it's your turn yeah, for comments. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, John, do you have the the stuff for the pump out boxes? Do you have that estimate? I didn't tell you to bring that. I just thought about it though. We have to get John has to get everyone the the data on the pump out boxes, the amount because we did do that shopping. Yeah. It's just been pushed off to the site because so many other things blew up well, in our face. Let's let's get it into so, the January meeting. Yeah. Just like I, I'm I'm of the opinion that I, yeah. there's the pump out kits. Yep. Yeah. Send it next week so I have it in time. Yeah. You have you have the number. You wrote it down. Yeah. That, that's yep. another one of those things. That yeah. The sooner we have those, the yeah. better, in my opinion. Yeah. And then did we did we get the um the draft? Because I know we had talked about that for um if we gave somebody a pump out box, the the agreement and the like absolution yeah. for the liability. No. Yeah, we, I thought we did. Well, 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 no? well, John has to give us the detail over, over what the, what's in the pump out okay. kit. So then Colin, um, the concept was to have a, a box ready to go. A resident could come pick it up from the township and they would have to sign a release saying that they are responsible for this particular item. Time frame has to be returned. Plus if there's any damage to the product, they have to um, give us the cost. Well, if there's any damage to their property yeah. as a result of using it, that we are not liable for it. Like right. anything that they do while they're using it is, is on them. Right. Uh, and then anything that they damage would have to be repaired or replaced so that the the kit is ready to go out to somebody else mm -hmm. so okay. 
I guess we'll get you more information so on when what John gives me the quote. I can make that a separate agenda. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sure. I'm call yeah. It yeah. Call Was that? I can put together a letter from that agreement. Yeah. Okay. Or, um, you want to call it like an emergency response kit rather than pump out agreement? Pump out agreement might get yeah. confused with the sewer pump yeah. out stuff. Yeah. What would you like to call it, John? Call it an emergency pump kit. It's some of the criteria you're going to have to work on staffing. It's over a foot of water in the basement. That's, that's not enough to pump it out. Yeah. A lot of the work don't do that anymore. It can actually cause a collapse of the foundation wall. If there's too much water, they might actually pull the water up. So that's like if it's over a foot, it's not having to shelf finish. You know, it's going to be a, a low displacement problem. So that's where the fire companies go out low. Most fire companies have the capability to go out and pump the water. Like the one we have on Healthy View, they had three and a half feet of water in their basement. That was one of the ones that we learned how to pump up out. Um, but uh, that's the only ones around here that have to make a So you'd be able to give us the detail on when it should or should be. Yeah. And again, it's something else we could put on the website and it's just another, yeah. you know, it, it, for me, it's like reassuring the, this focus that we're here to be part of the community. We're here to serve the community. We're here to make Marion Township a better place. And by doing these little things to me, it's just saying, Hey, this is, this is what your township is doing for you. We're trying to make sure yeah. we can help people as much yeah. as we can. Yeah. Help yeah. Them too. Um, I guess this is just another housekeeping item. I'm able to attach documents to multiple things in QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. So I guess coming down the pike with things like the culverts and whatnot, mm. it, it, I guess as, as a backup thing, if there's anything you want me to save in that system too. I would, are you I would using say liquid fuels mice. Well, I was thinking, Some of it, yeah. Yeah. And I would say you're going to have to have all receipts. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, so, we, we, so, we, so, yeah. And, and we have a, yeah. a digital copy of it elsewhere. What Irene is asking when she does like okay. the, so the, the, time, yeah. when yeah. the check gets paid, right. also attach it quickly. And I, I yes. think any, any time you can do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Like just that's just any time you can, if it exists, yeah. associate the QuickBooks too. Cause if yeah. we have it for QuickBooks, We'd have the digital master copy, quote unquote, and then we'd have the hard copy yeah. for whatever retention yeah. period we have to yeah. keep it. I mean, I hate to say it, I came upon it by accident because, again, I'm still navigating this whole process. But what, what I've been using it primarily for is all the, the billing that we get from the engineer. Whenever I send a letter out to that resident, I'm attaching it within QuickBooks too. So at the time that the letter's generated and the bill is sent, it's, it, it's another file within QuickBooks. So once we start getting any of this stuff for the culverts, whatever information you want me to attach, I will attach it to any bills. So in this way, it's kind of like a, another backup system of things yeah. that are available. Yeah. Are you getting wet, John? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> are you seriously getting wet sitting over there? Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Uh, it's um, prevailing wind is uh, yeah. uh, um, usually that way, but if we have a storm that's oriented the other way, it... it There's little rivers that come yeah. in go down into the pink. God, yeah. don't walk over there, yeah. Chuck, please. Yeah. You know what? I'd like to point out that, there's, you know, he's back there now. Are you really concerned for him? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't want you to fall through the floor or anything or slip or it's only it's only a call space under there. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, yeah. Anything else, Aaron? No, big thank you to everyone for being here and thank you for making it a much better year. And uh Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh wish everyone all the best. So thank right. you. Jim. Uh I can defer to Lee about the um ice skating right I did hear from him this week that they put in the water's in, everything's ready to roll. We're just waiting for it to get cold enough. And I think Saturday that's going to happen happens. very soon. Is it holding water? Is it holding water? It's full of water. Well, is, is it, and it's staying full of water? Yeah. Fantastic. Wow. Well, it's ready. It's ready. As soon as I said, it's the dummy this morning. Another, like, tank? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Water? 
Rain's going yeah, to so say you're getting, you're getting some. Wow. <laughs> Are we going to allow anybody to use that before signage just put up? It probably won't freeze until we have the signage because they're probably going to be done with the signage tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So the lights are working. The pressure's on to get the signs up. Yeah, very good. good. Yeah. Thank you yeah, very I'll... much, and thank everybody on the committee for yeah. getting the job done. That's 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 cool. It's going to be a huge yeah. plus. No. Um, uh, I don't think so. We'd have to check the burning ordinance, but I. people won't hurt themselves kind of thing yeah and, and it's your call um, fine, but it would be nice yeah yeah who's gonna put it out who's gonna yeah yeah, yeah better check with the insurance people too yeah yeah i mean that might be a if if we're gonna do like skating on a friday night like a an event thing that might be worth asking the insurance about it and seeing if maybe like somebody from the fire company could could come over and be there for it like that might make it better mm -hmm. um yeah other yeah uh, they were they were asking if they could do like a small little like bonfire sort of thing for like fish from the pond that they have it's in a container like when you see the kinds of people put on patios yeah and stuff like that they are legal anything else honestly state of pennsylvania any open burning they're legal it's okay. not forced but then you get into liability with the chimneys club things like that you have that like the metal out there for fire as long as it's an attended fire and an extinguisher closed, please. Okay, so if you had, like, you, like you were saying, like one of those metal ring things yeah. like you put out on on a yard for for burning and like a sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. truck ring, tractor, tractor. tractor. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I mean, we had somebody there with a fire extinguisher. Let's let's check with the insurance to make sure that like we're covered liability wise. But from what John just said, if you have that in a fire extinguisher, you're probably good. Is there going to be supervision there whenever that's open? So yeah, whoever yeah, supervises, yeah, whoever supervises. Yeah, it's a, my my thing would be fire extinguisher. We just make sure that somebody there has a fire extinguisher. But yeah. as long as the insurance is okay with it, I'm okay with it. Uh -oh. Or one of those fire blankets. No. Yeah. Like a twenty pound drag gun. Yeah. Yeah. Because the blankets, not all the tractor blankets, are not old enough. But also, it's why I know what some of the ones we've done at other locations. The firewood is locked up. So you can't just walk up and start burning where it's unattended. That whoever's responsible, that's where they have to control the firewood. The brain can stay there. It's just nobody can just come up and start putting wood in it and whatnot. They bring it, you can't stop it. Then it would be extinguished. You know, the bitch is that it's a big liability. Yeah. So let's ask the insurance company. But other than that's that. Great idea. Yeah. How about last the entrance? Yeah. Hot dogs, marshmallows, sort of thing. It's a good, it's a good addition to ice skating. So. It was yeah, so like a cooking, fire. So yeah. Okay. Jim, anything else? Uh, just Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for coming out in this wonderful weather. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lovely night out. Yes, it is. Um, Chuck, anything for you? Nothing for me. I am I am uh, intrigued by the fact that this uh, this meeting appears to be somewhat of a date night for certain people here. <laughs> and I'm I'm feeling left out, or maybe my my wife is been left out. So I'm going to see how this goes over the next couple of months, and maybe I'll have to. Yeah, I, I, yeah, big night out. I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, no. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's nice to be here in Barry Township. Thank you, Colin. Anything for you? Nothing. Okay, Linda. I'm fine. The only thing I was asking Chuck about earlier was uh, on this evacuation center and stuff. If somebody, if somebody had maybe consulted with the Red Cross because they do it all the time, so they have certain requirements they have to meet. They can at least guide us as to what's required for the new office building. Don't yeah, going on at the same yeah. yeah, we're yeah. we're not planning on putting a second floor no, for that reason. Yeah. Okay. Sue. Just Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Okay, fantastic. On that note, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is 8 40 p.m. Mm -hmm.
there second. a second? Second. Irene, second. Peter, roll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Meeting, Meeting adjourned. adjourned. Happy New Year, everybody. Merry Christmas. Once I get my baseball fixed, uh, what, what happened to your baseball? Oh,